Before we get into the Lord's Word of God today, I'd like to say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. Please open all the people's eyes, ears, heart, mind, and soul to the message you want me to share with them today. I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Sometimes you may hear me say Yeshua. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. And today's message is brought to you through the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit. Before we get into the two passages that we'll read for the sermon, I want to recognize who our Father is. And I'm just going to read very quickly a verse in Exodus chapter 3. Moses has been instructed by God to go and tell the Israelites that God has seen their suffering. God is going to deliver them. And Moses asked our God Almighty, what name shall I say to the people of Israel when they say, who told you to come? And reading verse 14, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And reading from the next verse, verse 15, This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. And so a memorial is a memory. And you and I need to remember that God Almighty is I am who I am. I am is greater than all things created, ever was created or will be created. I am is above all things. I am does whatever he wants, whenever he wants, to whoever he wants. And you and I never question, I am. Amen? Amen. If you brought your Bibles, please turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 19. And to set the stage, God Almighty, I am, is not happy with a place called Sodom and Gomorrah. And there's a righteous man who lives in Sodom and Gomorrah named Lot. And God is going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of the immorality there. There's a lot of gays and lesbians and immorality rampant. Not just in Sodom and Gomorrah, but the city surrounding it as well. And so God is going to destroy it, but he sends two angels to Lot's home to save Lot, his wife, and his two daughters. And so we're going to start reading verse 15. When the morning drawn, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand and his wife's hand and the hands of his two daughters. And so it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. And reading from verse 23. Then the sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zorah. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. And so he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Now, if you will remember the instructions that the angel told Lot and his family, 
was do not look back. She did not obey. She became a pillar of salt. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 4. Now, the Lord has told Moses to take his rod and go to the king of Egypt and tell him that the Israelites are my first son and you need to let them go so they will worship me. And God tells Moses to tell him that if he doesn't do it, God's going to kill his son. Yes. And as you know, he does. And reading verse 24. And it came to pass on the way at the encampment that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. This is Moses. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at Moses' feet and said, Surely you are a husband of blood to me. So he let him go. So right after God tells Moses to take his staff, go to the king of Egypt, tell them to let my children go, the Israelites, that Moses goes on his journey, but he gets interrupted. By who? By I am who I am. And he was going to kill Moses because Moses had not circumcised his child. Because God made a covenant with Abraham that every male child was to be circumcised eight days after he was born. But Moses disobeyed, and God was prepared to kill him. Thank God that Sabora, his wife, sprung into action and circumcised the child. Otherwise, Moses would have died, and God would have had Aaron or somebody else deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. What do we learn from these two stories, brothers and sisters? In Moses' case, if God says to do something, do it. In the king of Egypt's case, if God says to do something, do it. And in Lot's wife's case, if God says don't do something, don't do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. The great I am is greater than anything. All things were created through him, by him, and for him. Yes, the great I am is Jesus, Yeshua, who came and died for your sins and mine. Yes. And we need to honor him Respect him, obey him in all things. And if I am is on your side, who can be against you? Not one hair on your head will be touched. He will protect you. Nothing happens in this world unless God allows it to happen. And if you're living for your Lord and Savior, Jesus, the I am who I am. God will put a hedge around you and protect you from all evil things. So now it's important that we recognize our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who died on a cross for you and me. If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you love your neighbor as yourself, I invite you to participate in communion. Please go get a piece of bread and a little wine.
to participate in communion. How deep the Father's love is for us. It's just amazing grace. God sent his only begotten son to come incarnated in human form to die on a cross for you and me. And the Lord told Philip, when he says, show us the Father. And God tells him, Jesus tells him, Philip, have I been with you so long that you do not know me? If you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Hmm. It's mysterious, but it's true. The word of God is true and faithful and never becomes void. Remember the Trinity, the Godhead. It's an egg. You have the outside perimeter. You have the white part and the yolk. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all one, brothers and sisters. It's powerful. And so literally, our Lord, I am, came down, incarnated in human form to die for you and me. Wow. That's amazing grace. That's amazing love. We owe him everything. Everything. So when he tells us to do something, we need to do it. He tells us not to do it, we need to not do it. But God is so graceful, he knows we're not perfect. And when we make a mistake, we ask forgiveness with remorse and he forgives us. Praise God, praise Yeshua, praise I am, amen, amen. So brothers and sisters, let's pray collectively. And ask our Lord for forgiveness for our sins. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. Please forgive us for all the sins that we have done. And all the sins we did that were sins that we didn't know they were sins. We thank you, Lord, for sending your only begotten Son to die on a cross for us to redeem us back to you. We thank Yeshua for dying on the cross for us. Pray this in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. So at the Last Supper, our Lord took bread and broke it and said, This is my body that was broken for you. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. We'll eat together. And then he took the wine. And he said, This is the blood of the new covenant that was shed for you for the remission of sins. And we'll drink together. So brothers and sisters, please bow your heads with me. I'd like to end with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. Please bless all the brothers and sisters out there, all the ones that are called by your name, Christian, that have watched this message. Please keep evil from us throughout the week and lead us out of temptation. And grant us with all our wants, needs, and desires. But Father, your will be done, not mine. I pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters.